if not the very best president that Africa has ever had, Thomas Sankara. Mm, may he so rest in peace. Sankara took over power at the age of 33 after a bloodless military coup. The first thing that Sankara did was to reduce the salaries of all the ministers and all public officials, including his own salary. He took away their luxurious cars, Mercedes-Benz at the time, and he made them drive regular cars. Himself was driving, um, what do you call this thing? Okay, that, that thing, that was what he was driving. Anyway, no more first class. All officials had to fly economy. Not a single special preference was left for these officials. He put an end to colonial taxes and embedded in his people to stand against colonial mentality. He took care of food. He took care of housing. He took care of health care for his people. At that time, several African countries were dealing with disease epidemics, but not in Burkina Faso because he provided vaccines for polio, mis and meningitis. In one week alone, two and a half million people were vaccinated. His government was the first African government to publicly recognize the AIDS epidemic as a major threat to Africa. He was also one of the first head of states in the whole world to promote women's rights. Yes, the very first African leader to appoint women to major cabinet positions. Take a look. Ce qui veut dire que nous devons donner à chaque femme un emploi. Nous devons donner à chaque femme le moyen de gagner honnêtement et dignement sa vie. He creates a real shock by being one of the first heads of state in the world to promote women's rights. You guys can watch that documentary on YouTube. It's a wonderful documentary about the life of uh, Thomas Sankara. Yes, he stood against forced marriages, underage marriages, or even expelling women from school if they got pregnant. He was like, if you have to expel the girl, what about the boy that got her pregnant? I was like, God bless you, my brother. Ah, she didn't do it by herself now. Thank you, Jared. In fact, uh, when it was Women's Day, Sankara announced that women all over the country should not go to the market that day to buy anything that their men should do all the shopping and that they should let all the women rest that day because it's women's day and you know the men also enjoyed it for the first time many of them got to know the price of pepper the price of okra they actually appreciated their wives more after that experience and the story was reported all over the world also men were no longer allowed to beat their wives he also instituted mass sporting activities everybody had to become active and participate in sports in order to keep fit and healthy that was Sankara playing basketball you know uh, people were riding bicycles and he had a campaign then that healthy body and healthy mind would reduce diseases he also took environmental issues very seriously and insisted that they plant a million trees in order to encourage reforestation god knows that we need that right now in so many places in northern nigeria he also constructed vast roads and railways and connected all the major cities together at that time they didn't have much money in burkina faso but instead of relying on foreign aid he told everybody to take part and people were so glad to take part in building the railways and the roads he actually discouraged his people from relying and depending solely on foreign aid he also insisted that Burkinabe produce their own goods and everybody including officials had to patronize Burkinabe products yes yeah, so clothes food everything all made in Burkina Faso they were producing their own food wheat and um he facilitated good irrigation and fertilization programs ou mourir nous pouvons dépasser même notre production malheureusement par manque d'organisation nous sommes encore obligés de tendre la main pour demander des aides alimentaires installe dans nos esprits ces réflexes de mendiant d'assister produire plus parce que il est normal que celui qui vous donne à manger vous dicte également People started seeing made in Burkina Faso products just within four years that he was president. And in less than four years that he was in power, Burkina Faso that used to be very poor, this same Burkina Faso became food self-sufficient. I'm telling you, it was a major revolution at that time. Corrupt officials were tried in court. And the funny thing was, no lawyer was allowed to represent them. So you had to prove yourself guilty or not guilty in front of everybody. And it was televised. So a lot of people were disgraced by this approach because they were not allowed to pay lawyers to represent or defend them. So many people criticized this approach though as a violation of human rights. Now at the OAU summit that time, Sankara even challenged other African leaders to stop relying on the West or the East. Listen to him. We have sufficiently de bras and we have a market. 
immense, très vaste, du nord au sud, de l'est à l'ouest. Nous avons suffisamment de capacités intellectuelles pour créer, ou tout au moins, prendre la technologie et la science partout où nous pourrons les retrouver. Produire en Afrique, transformer en Afrique et consommer en Afrique. Produisons ce dont nous avons besoin et consommons ce que nous nous produisons au lieu d'importer. Le Burkina Faso est venu vous exposer ici la cotonnade produite au Burkina Faso, tissée au Burkina Faso, cousue au Burkina Faso pour habiller les Burkinabés. Ma délégation et moi-même, nous sommes habillés par nos tisserands, nos paysans. Il n'y a pas un seul fil qui vienne de l'Europe ou de l'Amérique. Like 33, 34, just imagine it. By the way, Burkina Faso was named the Republic of Upper Volta at that time by the French, yeah, the colonial masters. Sankara was the one that renamed it as a Burkina Faso, which means the land of upright men. He also commissioned several housing projects for the less privileged, and he was out among his people, always, you know, relating with people. He was not untouchable, you know how. Nowadays, our leaders in Africa, they have this long convoy following them and you ha everybody has to get out of the way. No, Sankara was never like that. He related with anybody and everybody. This man took Burkina Faso out of misery in less than four years. Less than four years. Of course, the French, yeah, did not like that uh, they were losing grip of their former colony because he stopped borrowing money and he stopped relying on their foreign aid and they wanted to make sure that other african countries don't follow his footsteps you get what i'm saying in fact all those that were benefiting from africa's underdevelopment at that time they were not happy to see burkina faso rising becoming self-dependent so guess what they did they sponsored his very best friend from childhood to overthrow him i'm talking about blaise compore the same man that has ruled burkina faso for the last 27 Seven years. So on October 15, 1987, Sankara was killed by Compore's armed men. How ironic that uh, Blaise himself was overthrown in the month of October. Just imagine what a coincidence. Compore's men killed Sankara and 12 other officials with a shower of bullets that dismembered Sankara's body completely. So they hurried and buried him in an unmarked grave, you know, like a goat. There was no ceremony for Sankara's burial. They treated him like, like an animal. His wife and two children had to flee the country and Akompore immediately reversed nearly all of Sankara's policies. He was never repentant, by the way. He actually pretended that uh, he was not the one behind the whole thing. The only thing he said was that, well, Sankara had jeopardized foreign relations with uh, former colonial masters in France. I was like, what? That's, that's the reason for you to kill the guy? Compore rejoined the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and he went right back to being a puppet in the hands of France. And once again, what would have led to true self-dependency and freedom in Africa was quenched by this man. You know, the question is, Would we learn a lesson from Burkina Faso? I mean, all the African countries where corruption is being celebrated today. Can we learn from the Burkinabes? All the countries that have dictators in power, when will you guys have your own revolution? But you know, as much as I admire Thomas Sankara, the man whose legacy will never die. Uh, you know, he actually reminds me of the fact that in Africa, we kill those we should celebrate and we celebrate those we should get rid of. 